Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to draw a spur gear in SOLIDWORKS. This design will have multiple configurations. To do this, we make a new part. I already had a head start here, so I don't have to input all the values. We start by inputting all these equations under tools, equations, or just by hitting our shortcut. So you input all these values. The top three are the most important ones, your module, N for number of teeth, phi for your pressure angle. All these are basically calculated out of these. The ones with an exclamation mark are just placeholders for now. After that, hit OK. Next step will be adding some configurations. To do this, you can just go to Insert, Tables, and add the design, design table right there. Then you can select Auto Create. I already made it, so I can just edit the table. So we will auto import all the relevant values. I suggest cutting or deleting all of the ones that are not these, which are five for your pressure angle, module, and n for your number of teeth. Once all these are in, or the ones you prefer are in, just click next to the table, and SolidWorks will add the appropriate configurations. Once that is done, we can make our first sketch. The sketch is made on the front plane. We basically draw five circles. I made one full and the other construction, so it's easier to track which one is what, because this circle will track all the way to there. After that, it's time to smart dimension them. Smart dimension, here you can name them. And to add the value, hit the equal sign, and then select your appropriate value, and hit OK. Do this for all five. Once that is done, you can exit the sketch and name it reference circle. Next step is making another sketch. This sketch will also be on the front plane. Here we draw a single circle from the midpoint. This circle will be coincident or co-radial co with our addendum circle. Once that is done, you can exit the sketch. Under features, we're going to extrude it. Select your sketch. We make it mid plane. And here we add the appropriate equation, which is the gear width. And you hit OK. We use the mid plane extrusion because then if you go to the right view, we see that the front plane is now in the middle and it makes it much easier to properly make the assembly. Now it's time to draw our involute. To do this, we create another sketch. Sketch on the front face. Then equation driven curve, parametric, and for the XT value, I'll just copy it from our existing part. This is our XT, copy and paste it in there, and our YT. For start variable, zero and end one. This can be a higher number, but doesn't make any real sense to start doing that. It just exits your part, so don't worry about it. Also, please lock them. That makes everything more robust later on. Also, a point of attention, we use here the dB over 2. That's our base circle over 2, because we need, of course, the, the, the radius and not the diameter. Once we have a nice yellow involute there, you hit OK. Now, we can still move this around, so we need to lock it down. To do this, I just change the visibility. Uh, we have some assistant lines. So we got one line as a reference. We make that one horizontal. 
and then two lines go to the reference circle just like that one of the lines will be defined by the angle of half a tooth eagle and there we have half a tooth hit ok and then this one this one will be, the, will be defined by the arc length of your base circle so this segment here will define uh, our position so to do that we make a center point arc hit ok there zoom in a bit hit the first point and the second point so now we can dimension that to dimension an arc length you just hit the arc with control second point third item and then we just select the proper value here we have the base circle arc length hit ok and there we go so our base sketch is now fully defined now we can anchor down our involute make a merge point there and then these points are just coincident here we go so hit ok we rename the sketch as involute and now we have a fully defined sketch which has our involute now this sketch has a little bit of a problem because if we go in a higher teeth number the base circle drops below our clearance circle and because we want to cut that away of course down below here because we want a nice closed profile to make a nice tooth cut but if you just cut it away this means if you go back and forth in the configurations that your sketch will fa fail because you damage your involute so we need to have like um, a function to define this how do we do that well if you go to a higher tooth number where we see the issue we just need to make an assistant sketch so that we cut away that there with an equation as well so we create another sketch same place on the front face there we we go to convert entities and we bring our involute to the new sketch at this point we can we can hide the involutes there so we don't have any annoying relationships that go back and forward and causes the sketch to fail later on same thing we make a center line and we make it horizontal horizontal yes and then we know it we need one more line we'll get that one all the way up to the top and just make that in a 30 degree angle so that we're way outside of the end point of our involute so that it doesn't fail at some point now we make uh, another small arc center point arc from here to there and this arc will be defined by an if function so this one I hit OK and there we have our involute trim circle this one let's bring up the equations this one is the if function it's base circle over 2 so I have the radius when it's smaller than the clearance circle over 2 um, then it uses this value if it is equal or higher then because these values are the same it's going to follow it's going to track the base circle so that's how you selectively trim it at this point you can just trim your entities and it's going to create a relation up here now this relationship is on this circle this circle will move from a low tooth number about here to the clearance circle there but it will stop there so the moment your involute drops 
below this line, it'll start getting cut. So that's a great way to have a selective cut without any issues. So you hit OK. And now we have a sketch with all the properties that solves in any possible scenario. So now we can go back to our to our standard design, have a look at it. Now we're back away from the clearance circle and we see that the involute is still fully there. So there's no cutting going on. And our, our circle here, our half circle, or our arc rather, is tracking the base circle. We name the sketch the involute trim. Once that is done, we can create our last sketch for our cut. Another sketch, front face of the part. Hide this involute sketch so that we copy the right spline. Over convert entities, we bring that spline again to our new sketch and hide this sketch. Now we can draw two center lines, one horizontal and one from our center point to the beginning of our spline. Next to normal lines from our dedendum point to our outer point and one from the crossing there all the way to our spline. For this part there, we use a, an arc, center point, hit the bottom part, click on the top one, and there we have it. Now you have to check that you have a, a complete chain to do this. Click on any line segment, right click, select chain, and now we see that we actually have a break here. You can eliminate this by just removing one segment and redrawing it. This will add the appropriate relationships. Select chain, and now we have a full chain. Now that our sketch is fully defined, you can exit it. We'll name this the tooth cut. And we can cut it out. Features, extruded cut. We'll go through all. No direction to, and from contours, we'll take this region. Hit OK, and now we have our cut. As next step, we can add a fillet, select the edge as radius. We take global variable and fillet radius. Hit OK. And our final step to have our cut is a mirror. We mirror on our top plane and the features we select our cut extrude and the fillet. Also, don't forget to add geometry pattern so that later on we can pattern everything around without any issues. Hit OK and now we have our cut. Next step is that we can add a chamfer to make it nice and clean. We do the chamfer of, on both sides, of course, select the edges. And here as well, we add our global variable, the chamfer value. Hit OK. There we have it. Now we can finalize it by our circular pattern. Our axis, there we can select the temporary axis from this part that um, SOLIDWORKS actually generates every time. You can find this here under temporary axis or just by hitting your shortcut. We select that as our axis. Here, global variable N for number of teeth. And as features, our cut extrude, our fillet, and of course our mirror. Once everything is happy, you should see the, the yellow marking. Hit OK and you have your full defined part. You can test the part now by clicking through your configurations and everything should solve without any issues. 
Last step is adding our shaft with keyhole. Going back to the standard configuration, there we create a sketch on the front face of the part. Add a circle from the middle. You can dimension it as shaft. Then we add a rectangle for the keyhole with a couple of help lines, two lines across. and one line straight up to the center. Make sure this one is vertical. Then our center point here gets coincident with our line. These two lines get equal. And this point coincident with our circle. Then we can add the smart dimensions. This will be our key height. And here on top, we have our key width. With that done, we can trim away the unwanted entities, like these two bottom lines and the four arc segments. Once that is done, proceed with extruded cut, and we make it through all. That finalizes our parts. Lastly, I will also add um, a sketch for alignment purposes. This makes it easier to line up the teeth in assemblies. To do this, we make another sketch on the front face. And we add two center lines, one all the way across, which is horizontal. And one line, oh, let's do that again, from our center, just to the dedendum. And we'll give that, that an angle. We already have that value. We have angle half tooth and we multiply it by two. That finalizes our parts. Thank you for watching.